Hi guys, welcome to my plus size grandma with Miss Coco Bowden. And I am just coming in really from working outside. Just decided to come and do a little video about what's going on with my yard and why my yard looks the way it looks. I'm trying to get this camera right, trying to get comfortable here so I can talk to you guys a little bit. This is me. This is my real life. This is, you know, just some of the things that I've been through. And if you think depression and anxiety disorders are not real, and if you think that it will not take life from a person, that it will not just, you numb out, you don't feel anything, you don't let anybody in, and you don't let anything out. Anything that you're holding, it stays right here. It doesn't go out. And it turns into a complete shutdown of what we know as life. Yeah, you're breathing and your heart is beating. But there is no quality of life because you don't, you can't think. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Outside of, um, well, you know bills got to be paid. So that's the routine. You pay your bills and... You know, you got to eat. Sometimes you may eat a lot, overeat, and sometimes you may not eat for days, you know. That's kind of how my eating disorder um, started. And, well, that's not how it started, but that's, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And anxiety and depression since childhood. So, yeah, it's, it's how my eating disorder started. And I'm telling y'all, um... Today was a huge, major accomplishment. What people see as a mess outside, I see as a woman who just survived so much that she shut down, but she survived again. Because um, when I became single, That was a devastating moment for me. But when my dad passed away, my dad, I couldn't put the things, I couldn't put it together until I was praying and praying today. And God revealed to me why I hadn't been outside like that. See, I go outside, but it's certain areas of outside that I do not go to. And those are the areas where I spent a majority of time with my dad. Which was in my front yard. Which was um, all around my yard. All around my yard. And so when my dad died. And y'all have to excuse me a minute because um, my ears are cold. But, um... Um... Lost train of thought. But when I get triggered, and, and the yard does trigger me, because that's the place where, you know, as I said, me and my dad, both my dads, we spent so much time outside. We talking, we spent um, about 17 years sitting outside talking every day, you know. And so when my dad passed away seven years ago, when he passed away seven years ago, that fear was so in me. I was like, I don't want to see him. 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 Because at this time, you know, I don't know the word of God. And I don't know scriptures like that. I don't have understanding in depth of what each scripture means. So when my dad died, and you know, I'm still living off of, keep in mind, I'm still living Often the old tradition that I grew up with, you know, people can come back and you'll see the spirits and you'll see them walking around outside or they're trying to find their way back home. So I had that type of mentality. You see the spirit trying to ease their way back home or back to visit you and stuff. That's the type of mentality I had and it really did not help at all because that was the reason why I had shut down because I stopped going outside to those areas because I said I do not want to see my dad if he dead I don't want to see him come back 
And I felt the same way about my biological dad. I said, they dead. I don't want to see them come back. And the grief was so overwhelming. The grief of losing my dad was so overwhelming. I could not sit in my yard like that. With it just... Looking out there knowing that my dad's not coming through with a tractor. He's not coming through with a shovel, a hoe, rakes, garden supplies. My dad came and did all that stuff for me, y'all. So understand, when my dad passed away, I ain't had nobody to do that for me. And I didn't know how to go on without him in that area. So... When we look at the anxiety disorder part of things had me, and the grief had me where I would not touch the yard. And it sounds crazy, but I wanted to leave the yard the way it looked when they was alive. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to leave it the way it looked when they was alive. And I put in my head that I would have this I would leave it like this. Don't touch it. Um, I shut down to the yard. It became too much. I shut down. I couldn't do it. I couldn't hire nobody to do it. Because I didn't have the mental capacity to do all that. And the only one that came and started doing something with the yard finally was last year was my cousin James. He was like, girl, you got those bushes so far up. Look at your grass. Your grass so far up. But you know, when you have these disorders, you honestly don't see that. You don't see it. You don't see how bad it is. I had tons and tons of trash in my yard from where dogs was bringing trash, putting it in my yard, different dogs throughout the years. Just bringing trash, just trash, bury it, bury it underneath leaves and stuff. And I never could go out there to run the dogs off or anything because so much fear. I had so much fear. I had fear of going to mow my grass. I had fear of reaching up in the tree and maybe I might grab a snake. My life was surrounded around so much fear, y'all. And listen, when I tell you, it's easier said than done to tell somebody, don't be afraid. It's easy to say that. But every person has to mature in their own way. In my case, it took me all of these seven years to get to that mature spot in my life where I could get up and go and do what I need to do. And I'm happy about that, that I got up today. Um, my therapist, I had talked with her today, had EDMR therapy today, and we talked, and, you know, she gave me some good outlooks on things. She told me to um, do a body scan to see where I'm tensed up at and to do my breathing, the inhaling and exhaling, and then um, try to go ahead and get in the moment of, in the present moment of doing what I'm supposed to do. And so that's what I did. And when I got started today, I worked two hours outside by myself. I didn't complain about breathing or anything. I do got some back aches. I got some back aches, so I can't bend all the way down, but hey, I got down, not down, down, but I bit low enough that I could cut the bushes and stuff. And once I started working, y'all, it was like, woo. It was like, I felt that miracle. I felt that breaking of that yoke. It was a good feeling today to be outside. Yes, in the videos I'm going to show you, it's a lot of stuff in my yard. As I said, some are understanding, some won't. Some will say, oh, she just lazy and didn't want to do a yard. And that's fine if that's what you think. But I know the spirit I had before I went through so much was not to lay in bed all day 
was not to just sit around and eat all day. I was a workaholic. I went straight from being a workaholic, working 16 hours a day, to just laying in bed. That's how easy it slips up on you. So I'm proud about what I did today. And I guess it's just one step at a time, one step at a time, and not overdoing it because I don't want to mess my back up. But I enjoy what I did today. I feel good. I actually do not feel sore at all. So I think that um, those classes I've been taking actually have been a benefit, you know, with the reaching and stuff. It's been a benefit in my life. Um, I'm getting ready to have my home remodeled, um, half of it remodeled on the inside and also have a deck built on. Yes, I said deck. And right here in the front where the deck is going to go, you can see the moonlight so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Whew. But anyway, this year, my deck is scheduled. My, my deck was scheduled and the remodeling on the inside was scheduled to be done last year. But what happened was Corona came and the companies didn't want to take a chance and then me you know i didn't want to take a chance either so they've gotten back in contact with me and they're ready to start rolling here within the next two months so i'm trying to get as much stuff done as i can get my house cleared out um uh work on my yard get my yard back love yeah love is a beautiful thing i gotta get my yard some tlc that's all it needed was a little tlc we take TLC for granted, and it's not where I want it, but I'm happy. I'm happy where it's at, so I just wanted to let y'all know that little bit on my plus size grandma, um, and thank y'all so much for your prayers. You know what's amazing about this whole journey is how much life you get back. No, how much you get back. And how much you're given. <sighs> we did that today. That's the amazing thing about it. Is that God knows exactly what we need. I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> God knows exactly what he, we need. And he gives back so much. When we lose. We're not really losing when we're in Christ. So... I thank God for accepting me as he is and taking me back. Thank you, Lord, because I see so much now in, in life that, you know, I couldn't see before. Even when I was well, you know, I couldn't see good things back then. Everything I wanted was like, everything I touched was like destroyed just like that. So I'm telling you, all once you start getting God in your life, in your heart, right here you got to keep them here you're gonna make it you're gonna make it it takes you it's baby steps for some of us and some of you are at the stage where you're leaping and that's a good thing and guess what we're gonna get there those of us that are in our baby steps we're gonna get to the leaping soon but bear with us bear with us while we growing don't try to make fun of us or humiliate humiliate hum humiliate us pray for us if you don't want to pray for us fine just be quiet that's even good right that's even better just be quiet just let us be <sighs> anyway I'm hyped up I'm tired and I gotta go take a shower and lay it down but I just want to come on and just and just say that because I know sometimes people can say well, she just, you know, like I said, about the laziness and stuff. Everybody that you calling lazy ain't lazy. Some people got some real issues going on that some of the things that you can get over is not that simple for somebody else. So never compare your mental health to somebody else's. How you got through it may not be how God wants this person to go through it. Like me. I know people who take medicine to get through what they've been through on a daily basis. But for me, I'm not a medicine type person because I'm a, I'm a former drug addict. So I don't 
do any medicine except high blood pressure pill, my allergy medications, and you know, you know, whatever I need that is really needed to keep me going and to keep me managed, you know. But I know people who take medicine and they're in the mental wards for some of the same traumas that I went through. So do you think I care about what anybody has to say? Because I know what it has really taken for me to stand up and, and, and confess to people that I don't even know and know that someone's going to be negative. It takes, it takes faith in God to do that. Because I don't want to see the next brother or sister go through life thinking that they can't rebuild, that they can't make it, that, that God ain't on their side. I'm a living testimony. I'm a witness. I'm a witness for the Lord. And I'm, I'm showing you right now, here head first, what God can do in your life. What the devil meant for bad, God does turn it around for your good. Did you not see my yard? My yard has been like that for seven years. Did you not hear me when I said how fearful I was just to go in my yard? And now, with the strength of God, I can do all things through Christ. And I got out there, and I went against everything that I was afraid of. <sighs> Carriage. Carriage is something you got to have in your heart. And it's built through and by knowing the Word of God. And trusting and standing and believing on it's got to be a foundation. I thank God that that was my foundation. Because when I lost my dad, I was just beginning to know God. I got saved November 2013. My dad passed away January 2014. I spent November and December and part of January at the hospital by his bedside day and night. I didn't want to tell my daddy bye, but I didn't want to be selfish either. And it's like when you lose a piece of you, when you lose a piece of you, it's hard to get up and go. You see life, you see other people living their life, and you see, you know that you need to live, but the grief is so covered. You're so covered in grief and pain and then it triggers something else and so you don't. I just sat there. I couldn't do anything. But I thank God that I'm back now. And it feels good to feel again. Y'all, my body temperature ooh, is not regulating right. So I know that I am healing and healed. I know I am healed by Jesus' stripes. We are healed. And we have to walk in our healing. Don't deny your healing. And at the same time, when you're feeling bad, please tell God. You ain't got to tell nobody else if you don't want to, but at least tell God. He's on it. All right, y'all. So I'm getting ready to go to sleep. I to take my, my um shower. And I didn't finish my hair today, y'all. Look. I'm putting braids in, but I did not get finished. I'm almost done though. Only got like, it's only this part right here. That's all that's left. And <laughs> I'll get to it soon. But anyway, y'all's a, y'all's a girl got to go. Love y'all cats. Love y'all.